This is going to be a full video on how to build an e-commerce product recommendation system. I'm just going to show you a quick example of something that you could say. This particular example was for a bag company. If you said, I want a bag to take to the beach, it's going to be able to, using the system, find a bag that's relevant to that query. And so you can see here, it's found four bags that it thinks are relevant for someone to take to the beach. Now there's nothing in the code for this to detect that these bags are perfect for taking to the beach, like it said here. It's purely use the AI to determine that their query is relevant for these products. So I'll do another example. I need a bag that sits on my side to carry a water bottle. And here you go, it's found a bag that it, it's recognized that this messenger bag is something that will sit on your side. And so it's obviously used that um, as its product. Another example might be, do you have any bags or buy? And so I was able to recognize that these might be relevant bags to this query. And so it's been able to do that really, really quickly. I've also set up the bot to also understand colors of certain products as well. So I could say I want a red sling bag. And so it's going to be able to understand that and give you the red sling bag. And so once again, I just want to reiterate that there is nothing in the system that is hard coded to know what this actually says. It's purely using the AI to detect their query and match it to the products that we've given it. So this is a really powerful system for your products and especially if you're an e-commerce store, this is going to allow people who don't know what your products are to put in any query they want and get the exact product that they would be looking for at an instant. So this is the build to create the e-commerce product recommendation system. I'm going to have this file in the description for a completely free download. Now for this to work, you're going to need access to Airtable and that is it. Just Airtable and VoiceFlow and you're better make this work. Now I'm going to start straight from the start and go from there. Essentially, as soon as you type your question, it's going to trigger this no match and this no match is going to go straight to this section here. Now this section is going to check whether or not they're actually asking for a product recommendation. If they've asked something that isn't really relevant to getting a product recommendation, it's going to recognize that and it's going to produce an AI response here. Now, if they are asking for a product recommendation, it's going to trigger this here. And this is going to go all the way to the set Airtable URL. Now, this is my Airtable database with all the products that I'm going to be using in this system. You're going to have access to download this entire table in the description as well. So if you want to use the same one, you can. So to get access to this Airtable URL, you're going to need to go to your Airtable table that's here. And you're going to have to go all the way up to this button that says developer hub right here. Once you're here, you need to create a personal access token. Uh, so I've already done that, but I'll do it again. I'll hit create a new token. And you just put in a random name, whatever you want. And then you just add all of these scopes. You just add them all in. Every one of them. And once you're done, you simply just hit add a base. And then you go add the table that is with all the products. And so that's for my EcoWare product list. And then hit create token. Since I've already created it, I'm not going to create it. But once you hit create, it'll essentially just pop up with your key. And you need to make sure to save that key. So once you've created your key, you're going to go over to web API documentation. Then you want to go into your table. Now you want to scroll all the way down until it says list imported table records. And then you want to grab this URL. So grab all the way up until just before the slash imported. So you want to take that and copy it. And then you want to go to your Airtable URL and then paste it right in here. Just like that. Right after this, it's going to go to a change the number of Airtable row responses. So however many Airtable row responses you want to get, you can set here. I've got it set to four as I only want four to pop up. However, you can set as many as, as, many as you'd like. 
Now this next step is pretty much the most critical step of the entire system. Essentially what we're doing now is taking the question that they asked and turning it into an Airtable formula. And so this Airtable formula is then going to be sent to Airtable to then pull the right products that we want to get. And so this is how it's able to take a question that's got nothing to do with the products and get the exact products that would be relevant to what they're asking for. And so you can see here, this is in the system prompts. This is quite a large system prompt. And you can see that I've set up a lot of conditioning to make sure this gets the right products that I wanted to get. So obviously if you're doing different products to this, you're going to have a look at this and see how I've done it to see what are the ways in which I can get this to be producing the right results. One of the most critical things is setting out these examples. So making sure we've got the inputs and the outputs to make it sure it knows exactly what it needs to output. So as long as you follow these guidelines that I've set here, essentially it should work quite well. And what you can do is link these up to this data logging and error logging thing here. And so you can check and look at what uh, the queries are being outputted as. And if they're not quite right, just change the code up to fixing that out. Now the next part is sending this, is taking this formula and actually sending it to Airtable. So the way this works is that when you send a get request to Airtable, you essentially just put the formula that you want into that get request and then it'll work. So what you need to do is I've blocked out my key here, but you need to grab the your bearer key. And so this key is the key that was generated that we generated earlier. You just got to copy that. You got to type bearer and then space and then paste your key and it'll be working fine. What I've put here is response. It, that just means it captures the response and puts it into this variable called AI output. This AI output is now going to go to a JavaScript code. And so I've listed here that this takes the Airtable data and converts it into variables. Now the variables just means we can actually do stuff with that data. So that just means we can actually output it and have it show up in the VoiceFlow chatbot. So the first JavaScript thing that I've got here is essentially taking all of the variables from my um, Airtable and essentially outputting it into this here. You don't have to go too in-depth with this. Just essentially copy it over, replace all of these with your column names, and then essentially it'll work. If it doesn't, chuck it into ChatGPT, and it should. It will tell you all about it, how it works, and you can tell it to update it for you even as well. Now, the next step is taking more JavaScript code, and we're essentially assigning the variables to each of the elements that were produced here. This just produced the elements all into one big thing. Now these are actually cutting them up into the variables. And so now we're, we're printing the price, the name, the image, the color, um, and we've also got product count in here as well. And then the reason we're doing that four times is because we've set our number of responses to four. So we've got four products that are gonna show up at a time. And so once these have been outputted and we've saved all of the details to a variable, it's gonna come over here. And so if I've set it to say, if color print is equal to zero, which is the first product's color, if that equals zero, that means we haven't got any products. So we might as well set this all the way down here where this is just going to output to the user that we were unable to find products for them. Uh, but then I've set an else. So if that's not the case, then we do have some products and we can go to this block here. Now this block is showing the right amount of products. So we obviously don't want to show, we don't want to use the four product um, carousel feature if we've only got one product found. So what this does is it takes that product count that we captured uh, using JavaScript earlier to give one through four responses. So you'll see here, this goes and then goes all the way up to this here. Now what we're generating here is the message that was put under the response that we received. And so this is just to really finalize the product recommendation, give them a little message as to why the, their query is relevant to the products that we recommended them. And so once that follows all the way up to here, this is essentially taking all the variables that we just saved through the JavaScript that came from our table and then combining that with our uh, recom text, which is recommended text. And then that's essentially it. You're, it's now complete. You're able to take a fully natural language query and turn it into an exact product that's going to help us a person with their exact need. Now, if you did want a system like this for your business, just visit inflate.agency and I'm going to be able to jump on a call with you and we can talk through whatever you want and we can build a custom solution, whether it's similar to this or something completely different, I can help you out with that. 
If you just want to have a play around with this bot, you can go to my website, inflate.agency, and I've got set up. This system is included on my website chatbot, so you can play around with that and see how it works there.